Hi, welcome to this week's edition of PHQ Questions from the Personality Hacker community. My name is Joel Mark Witt. And I'm Antonia Dodge. And Addison, let's get right to our question today. Hi, Joel and Antonia. You mentioned in podcast number nine that intuitives are more likely to feel that rules do not apply to them. And that concept is absolutely fascinating to me. Can you explain further why this is or point me toward a source to learn more about this aspect of the sensor intuitive difference? I have listened to your series on intuitives, which has been very fascinating, but I don't remember this particular characteristic coming up in those discussions. I assume it has something to do with thinking outside the box versus inside the box, but I can't really wrap my head around how an intuitive might think about roles at all if they don't imagine that they are to be followed. For context, I'm an ISFJ, but I think of myself as very intuitive friendly since I have grown up surrounded by intuitive people, concepts, and behavior. Being placed in gifted education programs from kindergarten to 12th grade, majoring in the arts in college, and getting an advanced degree in a theoretical field has led me to actually feel more at home among intuitive types, even though I'm a sensor. Still, I'm always searching to understand intuitives as much as possible. In addition to having intuitive friends, I also have mostly intuitive co-workers, and my spouse is an INFJ. Thanks, Tracy. Thanks, Tracy, for the question. Yeah, no, it's it's a really good one, this concept of uh, intuitives and how they feel about rules. Uh, before I launch into any form of answer, I, I just I want to put what I heard, like what struck me as sort of a misnomer about intuitives woven into your question, which was that, um, you know, having been in a lot of like special courses, been in gifted programs, you were around a lot of intuitives. And so I think that there's this idea, especially among sensors who read a lot of content on Myers-Briggs, that intuitives are naturally gifted in education and that sort of field. I think you're going to see possibly a higher percentage of intuitives in some of those courses and like National Honor Society and, and places like that. But I don't think being intuitive necessarily means you're going to you know, you're going to be a very good student. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I don't know if uh, if if you're going to necessarily see National Honor Society completely populated by intuitives. I, I think what you're going to see is people who are dedicated to working hard and making sure that they are you know, doing doing their best to take advantage of the academic courses in front of them, which could be either sensory or intuitive. I think in the past, you probably saw a higher percentage of intuitives in colleges and universities, but I don't think that's the case anymore since it's become fairly mainstream to need to go to, to college in order, or people feel like you have to go to college in order to get a good job, have a career, et cetera. So I, I think being intuitive friendly is awesome. I don't, I, I just wanted to make sure that I didn't, uh, I wanted to address that concept that having been in those you know, those societies, those courses, and put yourself in those positions necessarily means that you're going to be around a lot of intuitives because I, I always want to just clarify that being intuitive doesn't mean you're necessarily smarter than or that you're going to, you know, that you're going to be gifted. It just means that you think a little differently. Yeah. And, and it actually plays right to your question, Tracy, because, you know, intuitives oftentimes are looking to march to a different beat of a drum. And if, you know, and this isn't across the board all the time, but sometimes intuitives don't want to do the thing that everybody else is doing. They want to do something different. So sometimes you might not see people showing up in those places because that is something that's like recognized by society now, like being valedictorian in your high school or being in the honor society or things like this are external markers of success. And intuitives can oftentimes go for those markers, but sometimes intuitives are also interested in doing the, the offbeat, the different thing that the whole crowd isn't doing. So that's something to take into account as well as we're, as we're answering this question. Yeah. So there's one piece I think that also needs to be addressed, which is that if you're looking at the four-letter dichotomy in the Myers-Briggs system, so when we use the word dichotomy, we're referencing introversion, extroversion, which is represented by I and E, sensing intuition, which is represented by S and N, Thinking, feeling, which is represented by T and F, and judging, perceiving, which is represented by a J and a P. And so those are what we call the dichotomies. That's their technical name. Whenever you look at the dichotomies, I would say that closely following the heels of, you know, intuitives not really feeling like the rules apply to them are perceivers or P's in the Myers-Briggs system 
kind of feeling like the rules don't necessarily apply to them and judges being more inclined to follow the rules. So I, I do I do stand by that intuitives have a tendency to think that the rules don't apply to them, but you're also going to see this come up for perceivers and that, that includes sensory perceivers, um, SPs in the Myers-Briggs system. They're also going to kind of have a bit of an attitude that the rules don't necessarily apply to them. And that's for a very good reason. The difference between a perceiver and a judger when you look at it on the cognitive function level. So when you're looking at, you know, how the mind is wired, judges are defined by extroverting their their judging process, all right, or extroverting their decision-making process, which means they look to the outside world to help them create their evaluative criteria when they're making a decision, all right? So they're going to check in with what the rules in the outside world are while they're determining the right course of action. Perceivers, on the other hand, and this is this is one of the major differences between the two, perceivers, on the other hand, use an introverted judging process or an introverted decision-making evaluative decision um, or function. And so that means they're going to look with from to within, right? Like if I'm deciding whether or not something is important, if I'm going to take action on this thing, I'm going to consult how I feel about it, right? What do I think about this or how do I feel about it? So because a judger is more likely to use outer world feedback in order to calibrate how they evaluate or how they make decisions, they're going to check in with things like rule systems and infrastructure and how things are already set up. And that's going to be very influential to them when they're, they're making their decisions. Whereas perceivers are not going to be checking in as much. They're going to be more consulting how they, you know, basically their subjective experience. So a perceiver is a lot less likely to use what is already established as the rules to make their decisions. And a judger is far more likely. And this this includes, I mean, you can look at the two spectrums. You can look at sensor perceivers. And a sensor perceiver is probably more likely to disobey rules or not think that they apply to them than an intuitive judger is in some ways, especially if the intuitive judger is still at a point where they're looking, like they're very dependent upon the outer world to tell them how they should be behaving. That said, so I just wanted to clarify that. That said, the reason why we say that intuitives in general have a, have a tendency to not feel that the rules apply to them is not because they're disregarding the rules, especially in the case of, say, intuitive judges. It's because they feel that rules are oftentimes uncontextualized and intuitives are a lot more likely to add context to a situation that a sensor is. So intuitives have a tendency to want to see what you know, what preceded the rule, what follows the rule, what are all the systems surrounding the rule. And if after looking at the whole picture, they go, yeah, I don't, I don't really agree with that one. Then because intuitives are already used to being odd man out and already used to understanding how, you know, there's a bigger world than maybe other people are seeing, then they're not as apt to go, well, but I have to follow it anyway. They're more likely to go, what's the pattern here? And is a little quote unquote civil disobedience appropriate in this situation is the fact that other people have bought into this rule for a really long time, but this rule is not serving us. Can we just disregard that rule? Can we just like pretend that it doesn't exist or at least not observe it for ourselves? So that's why intuitives have a tendency to not think the rules apply to them. I think an intuitive judger is a lot more likely to see how rules are important and to understand that it's necessary for order and that hierarchies are important. And so I think just the fact that they're a judger means that they're going to be a lot more likely to give credence to rules. The, the, the type that is the least likely to care about rules are intuitive perceivers, right? Because they're already perceivers. They're already checking with how they feel about things. And they're intuitives, which means that they're going to add context. So on one side of the fence, you've got intuitive perceivers who may or may not even acknowledge the rules exist sometimes, right? They might just go like, oh yeah, there's a rule around that, hmm, and then just not care unless they get, you know, unless the fuzz comes down on them. (laughs) And then all of a sudden, you know, rules are real important at that point. And then the other side of the spectrum of the most likely to follow a rule is a sensor judger. A judger because they are using outer world criteria to help you know, craft and calibrate their decision-making processes too, and also because they're sensors. So they're a lot more likely to understand why traditions are important, um, keep infrastructure going, et cetera. And then somewhere between the two are intuitive judges and sensor perceivers. And it just kind of depends on the individual person. It just kind of depends on where the intuitive judge is at. It kind of depends on where the sensor perceiver is at. So in general, 
intuitives have a tendency to contextualize almost everything. And when they're contextualizing things, they depersonalize the context and then they add themselves in later, right? Like, like what's the context of this rule and am I caring about that? Whereas a censor is more likely to not question the rule because they're looking to other people to help them determine how, you know, like, well, how has this happened before? You know, what is the system set up? Do I really want to, you know, for in the case of a censor perceiver, they just might not want to have to think about it that much. They want to get into action. So they might just go ahead and accept the status quo in order to be in action because having to reevaluate all of these things means slowing them down. Whereas a censor judger has a tendency to uh, check in with experts and want to know what's, you know, what the status quo is primarily because that's where you get the most reliable piece of information is that the people who actually are in positions of knowledge, then you want to check in with those people and then they have a tendency to kind of hand a lot of authority over to them. So intuitives don't do that. They have a tendency to go, well, just because it's been done one way forever doesn't mean that it always has to be that way. And that's that's kind of part of what defines an intuitive as an intuitive is that they're looking for a different way of going about things. So I, I, that might be like a way more complicated answer than you were looking for. But from my perspective, I would say the other component to remember to add to that conversation around intuitives not necessarily following rules is that you also have to add the piece of whether or not they're a judge or perceiver, whether or not their evaluative criteria or their judging process or what we call decision making is being influenced by either the outer world or their inner world. Yeah. And and Tracy, by the way, thank you so much for asking the question. And as a as a censor, I, I, I personally appreciate, I think Antonia does as well, your attempt, like all of our attempts, like my attempt to understand people that are different than me, your attempt to understand people are different than you. I commend you for that. I commend everybody that wants to go down this path, whether they're sensor or intuitive. It's awesome that you are are increasing your understanding around this. So thank you for the question. Thank you for showing up and and asking that question. It's it's an important distinction, I think. And I'm glad we were able to answer that and, and add in that extra piece about the judger perceiver piece, because I think that that does inform a lot of it as yeah. well. Yeah. If you are listening and you have got your own question, you can ask a question over at personalityhacker.com forward slash questions. There's a place there you can record a question so we can actually play your voice live on the air as if you're here right in the studio with us, or you can type your question in that uh, pre-made form there, then we can get to it and uh, and answer it live on the air. Uh, my name is Joel Mark Witt. And I'm Antonia Dodd. This has been PHQ Questions from the Personality Hacker community. We'll talk to you on the next episode. 